Are you interested in taking computer science McMaster? Or are you just curious? Either way, I'm going to be walking you through my program and my experience the first year. Okay, first of all, let's just talk about computer science in general um, and if it's right for you. Because uh, computer science, you take a lot of programming and math courses and it kind of gives you an overall foundation to get into any programming job you'd like. Um, so a lot of courses you might not use later on, but it op it never shuts down a door for you, right? It keeps all of your doors open. Uh, for example, you take calculus, uh, you might never use calculus, but uh, like if you do your machine learning or whatever, you or game programming, you might need that calculus. Um, so tons of things like that right so if you're just looking into web dev or something like that maybe a coding boot camp is more right for you because uh computer science gives more depth than that um and one also one thing to also understand is the difference between computer science and software engineering uh, computer science is a lot more theory and math whereas software engineering has uh, a lot more of the engineering aspect of creating stuff right uh, systems design um, and you walk through the software development process while computer science is more a theory but uh, I think at least at McMaster computer science you take less courses than eng students so that gives you more time uh, to create uh, projects in your spare time or things like that and that's just something to think about uh, when you're comparing computer science versus software engineering Another thing you might hear all the time is co-op, co-op at McMaster. Because um, obviously you probably heard that it is not as good as Waterloo's co-op program, which is pretty damn famous, right? Um, like places in the States know all about Waterloo and their co-op program. Um, and I'll just tell you right off the bat, uh, McMaster's built-in um, co-op finding system, uh, Oscar Plus, is not as great as Waterloo's. So there's less listings and stuff like that. But that is not going to stop you from finding a good co-op if you put in the work, if you're qualified, um, if you have the right credentials, and if you work hard enough. What it, yeah, what it d does mean though is that you are going to have to put yourself out there and look for these listings, these job listings, uh, go through the applications yourselves. But if you put in the hard work you can get the same exact co-ops as Waterloo students. One thing to know about uh, McMaster is that I think it's a very tight-knit community. Uh, it's very welcoming, it's very open. I know in a lot of universities, they uh, students have to compete against each other. They're pitted against each other um, you know, for cutoffs and stuff like that. Um, and it's not really like that at McMaster. Um, people are always willing to help, uh, you know, uh, tell each other about their notes and stuff like that, uh, walk through problems, and, you know, all over quarantine, all through quarantine, I should say. Uh, I've been on the Discord server, the McMaster Computer Science Discord server, and it's just a, it's just a good community all in all. If you're curious about uh, the courses you take in Computer Science at McMaster, I'll post a link in the description. Um, but just to give you a brief overview, you take four math courses in first year you take the two eng maths uh, calculus one calculus two as well as linear algebra and then you take discrete math um, things like linear algebra is pretty clear how it relates to programming because it involves 3d matrices and stuff like that you know and if you're doing like game development or movement or anything like that uh, it clearly has a relation things like calculus may not seem as apparent but again um it's computer science it's a big foundation and it's preparing to do anything with uh, software basically um and discrete math is math with whole numbers um one two three four five and uh logic and it's very important to computer science overall and you'll be taking two more courses in discrete math in second year uh and then as for programming courses, there is Introduction to Programming with Python, good course. Um, if you've never taken programming in your life before, you'll learn your programming stuff in this course. Um, it's fast-paced uh, if, if you're new to programming, 
but if you keep up with the class you should be able to understand it um there's lots of help from tas if you need it and i'm sure fellow students would be more than willing to help uh introduction to computational thinking 1jc3 that is a course that kind of talks about uh you know computer science overall um, an interesting course introduces some functional programming which is uh you know a very uh cool programming methodology or uh design i guess way of thinking of in computer science way of programming way of thinking um blanking on the correct term uh i don't know Introduction to Software Development is an interesting course that teaches you about Git and C and make files and programming in Bash on Linux and SSHing. Um, and it's just an overall definitely cool course uh, for a developer. Any developer, you learn a lot of technologies that you're going to be using uh, throughout your career. Definitely a good course to have. Introduction to Web Design um, is a pretty cool course. Uh, uses elm which i'm not a big fan of but you know it teaches you a lot about design and things like that and during first year you also get to take two electives um which is pretty cool i was taking two innovation courses um if you don't know what innovation is it's something you need to make master it's kind of like an entrepreneurial type uh department course thing um or you learn about starting your own business and things like that. And that's just something I'm interested in and something you need to make master. So maybe if you're interested in that, check out that course. But yeah, those are my courses. And again, I'll have uh, all the computer science courses linked in the description if you want to check them out. Let's talk about online school because the way things are looking now, it's likely that next year in 2021-2022, uh, to 2022, things will be online um and that can be kind of sucky um if you have trouble focusing at home if it's things are busy at home loud it can be um, incredibly difficult but uh there's also advantages to some people if you like watching lectures asynchronously making your own schedule um watching lectures in two times speed it may be useful um especially if you're like a long commute or something to school quarantine is sucky but it's not something you have to go through alone um find those friends find those people in your life um who matter to you who are there to support you um it can be tough really moving especially if you move um to a university new place uh new people you never talked to before but ming master has a lot of clubs and stuff like that and you can join them and meet new people and i just really encourage you guys to seek other people out um Especially with mental health, I feel like university is so much easier when you have people around you. Um, I know there's times um, in the last year where I was sort of by myself, uh, which was difficult, but reaching out to the people around me helped me out tremendously. Um, so yeah, and I think that goes for anyone, no matter what university you go to, or if you're not in university at all, just, you know, find the people around you and it'll be all right. That, that's more of a general thing. But I think it's relevant today with everything going on. If you guys have any more questions or anything like that, uh, feel free to comment. I'll try my best to answer them uh, to the best of my ability. Um, yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Um, click the like button, subscribe. It helps out a lot. I'm trying to grow this channel. See you next time.